Update. Am I the a-hole for banning my husband's best friend from our house? Original story. My husband and I have been together for 10 years, including 6 years married and have a beautiful 1-year-old. He has a best friend from his college years. They are very close. And since they both are only child, formed brotherly bond. His friend and I never get along well. At first, he was jealous that my husband was in a relationship and seemed disgustingly in love with me, in his own words. As years passed, he became more civil towards me. But I'm too socially shy and introvert, so we never become friends or anything. I admit I don't like to hang out with him and avoid him. But he come often to my house, and every time I cook or bake something special, and it's the only way we can get along. I did this because I know how close my husband and him are. Recently, my husband got a new cell phone and handed it to me because he always forgets his passwords. So I was downloading his chat's backups when I saw a recent message from his friend telling him that Hex Girl was really disappointed he didn't show up again. I was intrigued. So I opened the chat and, oh man, the whole chat was filled with messages from his friend encouraging him to meet with this girl. My husband brushed him off all the time, but he kept insisting. At some point, his friend told him this girl was way younger than me, and her body was hotter and that my husband had to admit that my body have changed a lot after my pregnancy. Even mentioned that this girl's genital will be tighter. Disgusting. I've never felt so dragged. His friend messages him multiple times, saying he was drinking with his girlfriend and this girl who was willing, and called him a coward when he refused. I confronted my husband, and he said that in fact his friend have been being more of a jerk than usual but he never actually considered cheating on me with this girl or anybody else for the matter. I trust him, but I don't trust his friend. I don't want to be that type of wife and tell him who he can't be friends with, but I made it very clear I didn't want his friend to put a foot in my house again or be near my daughter that recently started calling him uncle. My husband agrees, but thinks banning him from the house is too much. Said he would have a serious talk with him about his disgusting behavior, but the banning was too much and this is his house too, so should have a say. That led us to a fight because I'm adamant they could stay friends but not in my house. My husband thinks I'm the a-hole for trying to rule who can and who can't come to our house. Am I the a-hole here? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. Your husband should have spoken to him when he started the conversation around him leaving you for someone younger. Allowing it to continue has just sent the message that he is not rejecting it completely. Also insisting on remaining friends with someone who clearly wants to ruin his relationship. The friend is disgusting and should not be allowed in your home. This isn't a friend. A friend won't actively and so blatantly try to ruin a friend's marriage. This guy wants to throw a hand grenade at Opie's relationship and watch it burn. The sad thing is that Opie's husband still doesn't see that this isn't a friend. What a sad situation. Not they haul. But OP, if you're reading this, please ask your husband to take a closer look at whom he brings around himself and his family, in the guise of calling themselves a friend. OP, your husband shouldn't be comfortable having a person in his house who is actively trying to destroy his marital home. He must be banned from your home for talking disgustingly about you and try to separate you and your husband. You feed him and respect him as special guest, and he turned out to be evil and wanted to destroy your household. No, he is not allowed again. He could find another place for his dirty plans. Not a hole. In fact, I think you're still underreacting here. Why does your husband even want to be friends with this person? He is disrespecting your marriage and you as his friend's wife. Actively trying to sabotage your marriage while smiling in your face. This is really disgusting behavior. And being banned from your house and child should be the first step. I said the same thing. Why is the husband even still friends with this guy? He should have been cut off the first time he tried to get him to cheat on his freaking wife and mother of his child. Absolutely disgusting. I feel like Opie is underreacting to the situation. This guy should be out of husband's life for good. And now for the update. Thank you for all your responses. Some people ask me for an update. Yesterday, after breakfast, I sat with my husband to have a talk. I told him he was right. Banning his friend was wrong. They will meet anywhere else where he can actively drag me down and encourage him to cheat. Plus, I don't want my daughter to be near a grown man that was constantly thinking about how tight a young girl's V may be. I didn't mention it in my post, but this girl is in her early 20s while we're all in our mid-30s. 
My husband was mad at me for insinuating that his friend was a perv and was even more mad because now I was saying he should cut his friendship out. I told him I feel disappointed that he let someone talk of me and my body that way. I was disappointed that someone tried to sabotage our marriage and I let him got away with it. If the family we had built was less important than his brotherhood, he should go ahead and tell me already so I won't be losing my time. He said he was right, but I couldn't possibly understand him because I came from a large family. I pointed out that he has a family now. This family must come first than any friendship, brotherhood or whatever. He agreed. Well, later that day, his friend came over to pick up something. They ended up hanging in our front yard for two hours. And my husband even took our daughter to say hi to uncle and play. I was seeing red. I waited until the friend left, packed mine and my girl's stuff and left to my parents. I messaged him. He had two options, to man up and stick to his family or see us in court. I wasn't about to take any disrespect from nobody. Not him, not his friend. I also sent him the link of my previous post so he could see some extra perspective. He messaged me telling me how sorry he was. He was willing to do anything to not lose us. He said he was sorry for being so weak and not protecting me, our intimacy, and our marriage. He sent me some screenshots where he tells his friend to stop trying to introduce him to women and getting him to cheat. He asked for a dinner to discuss some boundaries they need to set in their friendship and the respect he should have for his marriage. My husband asked me to come along to this dinner so I can see myself that it's true he's setting boundaries and he will put distance between them too. Also agreed to do some kind of counseling to deal with his own trauma of losing people. I said that I support him heartily, but I'm staying with my parents until dinner with his friend is over and I see some kind of improvement. That is it. Again, thanks. Uh, he wants you to come to dinner with a problem to discuss boundaries? No, he knows what the boundaries are. He can discuss them with his friend, and then he can let you know what the friend and he decide. Having dinner together to discuss boundaries is some weird triad third wheel crap. His friend isn't part of your marriage. This two things bother me. First, why is the dinner needed? Your husband just needed to call him and be blunt. Second, you had to leave in order for your husband to step up. A decent man would have automatically stepped up the first time his friend disrespected his wife in marriage. I'm glad your husband is agreeing to therapy because he needs it. Let him see this post also, and good luck. The fact that he still wants his a-hole friend in his life and thinks that setting some boundaries where you go back to not hearing what the friend is saying to him makes me think it's smart to stay at your parents' house. I wish I could reply to everybody. I made it clear to my husband that either he cuts his friend out or I'm leaving forever. If this dinner doesn't end on my husband cutting his friendship, I'm not going back home. I'm not taking some fake apologies. I'm standing on my ground. I wouldn't go to that dinner. Dollars to donuts, the friend is already going to frame you as overbearing and try to ruin their friendship. And even though your husband is the one to invite you, my guess is that the friend will try to get in his head that you forced him to do it. It makes it easier for the friend to do this if you're at the dinner. Also, if you're going to rebuild your relationship with your husband, you have to rebuild your trust. Trusting him to do the right thing without you being there is the important part. He needs to do this on his own. I agree with this. The friend will absolutely see it as Opie forcing the husband to do it. I also agree. Dinner? He needs to dump his disgusting, misogynistic friend who objectifies women and glorifies cheating. If the situations were reversed, the husband would not be okay with a friend who encouraged Opie to cheat on her husband with a well endowed man. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hall for revealing our net worth when my wife constantly says we are broke and making me look bad with money? I, 31 male, have been with my wife, 30 female, for 10 years now, and she always has had this habit of making me look bad with our finances. Whenever anything regarding spending money comes up, she will always say how broke we are and she doesn't have the money to do this or buy that. The thing is, we are doing well financially. We have decent jobs and combine our salary is roughly $125,000 a year. As of today, our net worth is more than $1 million but less than two. I had saved slash invested a lot before getting married, so I gave us a good head start. I control the finances slash take the lead, but we both agreed to living a very modest life. We both have our cars from college, for example, Honda and Toyota. She knows everything about our finances, 
because at least once a month, I go over it with her every time I deposit money in our investment accounts or our kids' college funds. For banking, we have an emergency fund and a budget everything else to go straight into investments. We basically stay right at $10,000 in our bank savings account and $500 in our checking account after bills. Most of the time, there's more than $500 in our checkings, but once I pay our credit card each month, I then move anything extra. We always use the credit card, so it's not like we only have $500 to spend. Our credit card limit is $25,000. A few months ago, we had dinner with our friends and they talked about buying a new car. My wife said something like, I wish I could get a new car, but I'm always broke after paying the bills. We still have our college cars. Note, wife does not want a new car. She will go on talk about that if she had money, what she would want to buy, and it always makes me feel ashamed. This unbroke story has been happening for years. When we were driving home, I asked her about. She understood we have the money, but it's how she feels because her bank account is always low. I said I can increase our budget or keep more money in our bank if she wants. Since we are doing well, I'm okay with spending more. She said no, and again was happy with our finances. I explained that when she says we are broke, it makes me look bad and I feel ashamed. It's as though I can't provide for the family and slash or I am bad with money. She doesn't see it that way. The same conversation has come up numerous times about us being broke. Recently, I reminded her numerous times it makes me feel and look bad in front of friends and family. I told her if she keeps saying stuff like that, I will reveal that we are doing well with money. I gave her a few reminders I'd eventually do this, but she kept going with the I'm broke story. At a dinner with her sister and parents, the same I'm broke story came up. I piped in and said, it's weird to hear millionaires say they're broke. My wife said, haha, I'm not though. And I quickly say, we are millionaires and you know that. We go over our finances every month. Well, the I'm broke story stopped after that and the night went on as usual. A little later, the same thing happens with her friends, and I use the same line. Now my wife is mad at me for using that line and revealing roughly how much money we have. She said it seems like I'm gloating. I say it's better than making me look like I'm running us into the ground financially. So a mighty a-hole for revealing our net worth when my wife says we are broke? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She was dismissive of your feelings and was constantly lying to the people around her. It's a classic case of play stupid games, win stupid prizes. This, if she doesn't want it continually mentioned, she needs to stop crying poverty. It's pretty simple. Yes, I grew up fairly poor since my mom was a single mom raising three kids. Seriously, we were poor. We were homeless for a bit few times, and I thought it was a summer where we only ate ramen, chicken salad, and water. But apparently it was a few years and we lived with my grandparents for a while but they were super toxic, especially to my mom, so we got out of there. She now has a boyfriend, pretty nice guy, and his daughters are extremely horrible. They always complain about being broke when one has the ability to live nicely but go way above her means, and the other constantly has thousands in her bank account, but is too stingy to spend it. Seriously, she will worm her way into getting you to pay, and if you don't, she won't go. It's one of my pet peeves when people complain avidly about being broke when they aren't because I've been there and it isn't fun. Not today, Hull. It's very weird that your wife feels the need to constantly downplay and pretend that she's poor. What about all the people who are actually struggling? Very weird and a horrible thing for your wife to do. It's good that you called her out on it. Indeed, you ask her to stop, but apparently she didn't care. And then she's angry that you tell everyone that you're not broke. Info, why does she downplay your combined wealth? Is she worried her family will ask for financial assistance? Is it crack about her college car because she's sick of using an old car but doesn't think you'll agree to buying a new one? And why do you feel like it's specifically calling you out? Is she saying you're not earning enough or that you're spending all the money? I feel like there's something going on you haven't told us. It's possible that she's just frustrated with the results of their budgeting. I'm in a similar scenario. I've got a job with a decent salary. Not anywhere near Opie's, but I don't have to worry about starving anytime soon. Right now, I'm taking the opportunity to save as much as possible for the future. And it sucks to have limited spending money, even when I, hopefully, will be much better off when I retire, thanks to aggressive savings early on. 
But because it's my choice, I don't complain about not having spending money because I'm choosing to save it. And that, I think, is where Opie's wife is missing a step. It's like being grumpy because you're on a diet. It might be reasonable to be grumpy because you're hungry, but it's a-hole behavior to take it out on people around you. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for making my wife pay for her own speeding ticket? My wife is a stay-at-home mom to our two kids, four and seven. She is great to me and does an amazing job with them. Not so much with driving. She costly speeds. With me, with our children, and obviously when she's driving alone. She's been very lucky not to get into any accidents and has only gotten a couple of warnings over the years. Well, that luck finally ran out and she got a speeding ticket yesterday. She tried to BS me that it was so stupid, I was only going like 5 over. I saw the ticket and she was doing 82 in a 65. Unacceptable. I mean, people mess up, but I've talked to her numerous times about her driving and she's changed nothing. I did raise my voice, but I made it clear that there's been enough of this nonsense. It isn't hard not to speed. We are 100% joint on finances. All of my paychecks go into a shared account and we pay bills out of that. We each get $300 a month in personal spending money. So I told her that she would have to pay the ticket out of her own fun money. She got angry and said that it should be treated as a normal expense out of our account. To be clear, I'm not a penny pincher or scorekeeper. We both screw up and bail each other out all the time. But those are genuine accidents. Speeding is intentional and safe and 100% preventable. I said that we could pay for her to take defensive driving to get the ticket dismissed. She doesn't want to do that. She just wants the ticket to go away and I'm being unfair for making a big deal out of this. I said that if we really wanted to be fair, she would have to pay for defensive driving or pay the ticket herself plus the increase in our insurance for as long as the ticket is on her record. What I've offered is more than fair. She's giving me the silent treatment now. Am I the a-hole? Well, she must have had fun driving that fast, right? Then she can use her fun money. Speeding is a choice, and she might hurt someone one day. If her fun money wallet has to hurt for a little while in order to teach her a lesson, then so be it. Not day hole. Yeah, both of the options you're giving her are reasonable. The only possible reason she should get out of paying money is if she somehow convinces the judge to give her community service instead. And even then, only if you drive her so she doesn't get more tickets on the way. Not day hole. You pay bills out of your joint account, not tickets. She needs to learn that actions have consequences. She got angry and said that it should be treated as a normal expense out of our account. Not day hole. Yeah, this is some great ABS right here, Opie. You play, you pay. We all know that. Why would it be joint when it wasn't a joint decision to speed?